Right now, it's time to bring in co-host Jeff Small, along with our guest, Harry Dent. Harry's the author of the book, Zero Hour. He's also the editor of the free newsletter, Economy and Markets, which you can review by going to harrydent.com. Harry, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, nice to be here, David. So I was with you, of course, uh, back in February in Sun Valley, and you were saying that the market was overblown and you expected a, uh, a pretty significant pullback uh, you know, for the most part this year, I, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, but did you think it was going to happen that soon? And did you think it was going to be because of the pandemic? Well, we were looking for early March to May. We, we were in the, what I call the final kind of orgasmic phase of the bubble, which came when the feds had to react to the repo crisis. They printed $760 billion in just a couple of months. So that Mm. That was, the, and the markets were going straight up that. I figured that would end as, as early as early March. Well, then the, uh, the, the, the virus comes in and, and, and heads that off a few weeks early. But I said, hey, it doesn't matter what the trigger, and this is a hell of a trigger, but the, the first crash in a bubble like this is usually about 40% in less than a couple of months. And, and that's what we got even quicker. This was in five weeks, the fastest crash in U.S. history outside of 1987, which was kind sure. of a lot of things. So this, I mean, I did not expect this to trigger it. I'm the, I was expecting defaults in China, big developers, or, or in the frackers, you know, in the U.S. with low oil prices. It takes a lot of things like the, like the subprime crisis last time, but it doesn't matter. I tell David, don't confuse this virus, which is the perfect trigger, and a deep shock, a sudden shock, with the fact that we have the most over-leveraged over indebted, over stimulated economy in history since 2009. And when this thing goes, this is just the first crash. We're in what I call the predictable rebound for four, five, six months and likely towards the election. And then we will not come out of this shock. Everybody so thinks, oh, once the virus disappears, no. Too many businesses will fail and never come back. And I so, learned that so from Harry, the hurricane in Puerto Rico. Harry, predict, oh, uh, yeah, granted, hurricane in Puerto Rico was horrible. A humanitarian crisis like what we're going through now, just different. But but are you surprised the extent to which the markets rebounded short term after the bottom in March? Exactly what happens. Most of the rebound happens in four weeks, and then it goes sideways, edging up for several months. This is following the formula perfectly for the 1929 crash, first crash and rebound for five months after that. The, the 2000, the last big bubble we had, the 2000 tech crash, we had a 40-some percent crash and then a rebound like this for three or four months this is just a little stronger because we have so much stimulus i mean the amount of stimulus they came yeah. up with in weeks uh was astounding which shows how desperate they are to keep this darn thing going so so that that's it's a it, danger sign to me it's 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 incredible you know and uh i know that you're expecting a perhaps even a bigger wave down so i want to hand it over to my co-host jeff small because he you know, he, he, he exposed himself last week on the show that he's a little more bullish than maybe you and I are. So, Jeff? Hey, Harry, it's Jeff Small here. Hey, sometimes the triumph of optimists leads to success or even foolishness and stupidity. And right now the market is snapping back, so the optimists are winning. But what we anticipate coming forward, and I'm really curious to get your insight on this because you are a market historian, uh, what we see will happen to the markets even worse if we have a second wave as compared to the Spanish flu. The Dow did not start to trend down even for a long-term projected time until we had the second wave. And so I'm curious to gain your insight on that. Well, you know, first of all, the Spanish flu was, was so much worse. 50 million people died. There was a thing in the summer, a little one, nobody paid attention. Then it came back when World War I ended, it came back massively because everybody partied and got out in the streets and stuff. So, so it was terrible, 50 million people. But let, let me give you the comparison. The Dow Jones went down 11% at worst. This is such a reaction because the bubble is so great. And I've been saying this, it, won't, it could be any trigger to cause this. So this is gonna crash from my view, Jeff, just like any major bubble in history, first big crash, rebound for all types of reasons. Oh, the government, plenty of stimulus, and things are coming back, the virus isn't gonna last. The virus will probably come back, but not, I don't think, terribly bad because people are on guard this time and they're not gonna go out and party like they did after World War I. So I see that as a minor threat. We are so much in debt, Jeff. The demographics have been getting worse since 2008. I predicted the 2008 crash, 
20 years before it happened, just as baby boomers would stop spending and everything would be overvalued. Well, things are way more overvalued. We have about 80 trillion more debt in the world today than we had back then. And demographics are getting even weaker into 2023 before they turn around. So I say we get a big whack here and then a lot of businesses go under and a lot of baby boomers right now, you know what they're doing? They're getting on the dole and then they're gonna retire. They're never gonna come back. Today they've intended. And, and so we don't see the economy go back to normal like people think. It's gonna be you shake the bet after a couple of months shock. And we just don't come out of this and then the debt and the overvaluation of financial assets keep weighing in and we go into a deeper crash of the levy. So just just so I understand, Harry, what you're saying then is we can't we can't expect the economy to grow for growing the debt quicker than the actual economy. Right. And you, what you're anticipating then is not a even though the markets had a V-shaped recovery, a truncated V, because we've kind of hit the top here and we're not at the peak. We're going to have more of a W um, recovery in the market where we have a, a peak, a valley a peak, another valley, and then hopefully come back to another peak. And Harry, is, is that what you and, and, and Harry, we need to take a commercial break, so we need to invite you back. Hopefully you'll stay with us for a few more minutes to answer that question. I've always got one too, stewing in my mind. So uh, stay with us, please. And you stay with us too. We have a lot more to come from Harry Dent in just a moment. We'll be right back. Now it's time to bring back co-host Jeff Small, along with our special guest, author Harry Dent, editor of the free newsletter, Economy and Markets, which you can review by going to harrydent.com. Harry, thanks for being kind enough to stick around. Sure. So, okay, right before the break, uh, Jeff had asked a question and he had said, gosh, you know, you're talking U-shape. It sounds like you almost think there's going to be a, a W-shape recovery in it. And I would actually say it could be a W with maybe a few more W's connected to it. Your thoughts? Well, you know, I see more like, a, I hate to say it, a truncated V, that, that the stock market isn't a V-shaped rally, which is absurd because we're not going to get a V-shaped recovery in the economy. It's not even possible in, in any of my scenarios. But the economy goes down, it starts to come back, but comes back weaker than people think. And then the stock market starts to fall and then debt problems start to, you know, emerge around the world. Again, people do not know how weak this economy is. How come it's taken... 16 trillion in money printing around the world and now another 5 trillion just recently all these stimulus plans and the best we can grow is two percent in the u.s one and a half in europe and one percent japan we are already weak and all it takes is this shock to prove it i am telling you a lot of businesses will never come back out of this we saw it happen in the hurricane in puerto rico a similar three-month short-term shock and then businesses don't come back and you never come out of it and we have a deeper downturn from late 2020, early 2021, all the way into late 2022. By the way, I've been forecasting for 20 some years that the bottom of the biggest crisis of our lifetime would be in late 2022. So this is much bigger than anybody's seeing. It's on a 90 year cycle to 1929 to 32, 1837 to 42, mega bubbles, mega depressions and resets, deleveraging of debt and financial asset bubbles. The difference is time, you guys, the financial asset bubbles are much bigger because they blew up the financial bubbles to get out of the debt crisis in 2008. And now they've got a bigger financial. Now, now Harry, during the Great Depression, of course, we the stock market went down 90, 90, 90%. Um, if you had a, if you're a betting man and you had a guess, how far down will the bottom of the market be this time? My forecast for years has been 5,000, give or take 3,800 to 6,600, 5,000 on the Dow. That's about 85%. And of course, on the NASDAQ or the Russell 2000, it could be that 89% we saw in 1929. It is of that level. Real estate went down 34% last time. I'd say 45 to 50% this time. And you saw how much havoc that caused on the bank. Sure. The real estate bubble has come back for a second time. And this is more global. And whatever we have here will make China look good because China has got the biggest bubble in the world, particularly in real estate. So, so, so Jeff, is, is, is Harry helping curb your optimism uh, about the stock market future just a little bit here today? Well, I, I know I know Harry's call on the Dow is between 5,000 and 6,800, but I mean, Harry, come on, you got, you got to work with me here. Anybody can pick a number out. 
we, there's got to be a reason for there's, they're the sellers or the holders of investments in the market, the holders of stocks, to sell to get to that point. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's called fear, Jeff. It's called when reality hits. We've been living off of trillions and trillions of money printing out of thin air for 11 years. Anybody thinks you get something for nothing in this world, be happy and expect things to get better. I'm telling you, this economy is so weak. When it starts to fall, people are gonna run. That's what yeah, I'm I, I agree with you. I agree with you there. Years, so I'm not I, pulling a number out of my, I, you know what? I agree with you, Harry. I agree with you, but 5,000 to 6,800 is a little bit of a stretch. We'd have to have a humongous reason for people to sell there off everything. There will be a humongous reason. And if it's not, I'm going to quit my profession in 2022 and be a limo driver in the Gold Coast of Australia. Well, what would the reasons What would the reasons be, Harry? Tell us what you think the reasons are that would push prices down that low. What happened in 1929 to 32? Massive failures. What happened in 2008 It wasn't just financial institutions and Lehman Brothers, which they sacrificed. It was GM. It was AIG. Major company. We were going into a depression, and the only way we got out of it was they printed trillions and trillions of dollars to cover it over. They didn't deleverage debt. They didn't let the economy get rid of its excesses. So we're going to have to do it now bigger. We have more debt and weaker demographics than we had back then. We're just going to come down to reality. That's all it is, Jeff. We are so far out of reality. It's not funny. And nobody realizes that because we're living in bubble la-la land and even Warren Buffett doesn't get it. You know, I, I have to tell you, Harry, I love your passion. Um, and uh, I, but I've got to ask you on the personal side, uh, how's your blood pressure? <laughs> I don't have high blood pressure. <laughs> guys, see, that's how it is. People who let it all out like I've that. I've never had high blood pressure. I don't understand. If anybody should have it, I should have it. That's, I know exactly. That's my whole point. But uh, that's awesome. So fi final question then for our viewers, for our listeners, and we've got only one minute left. Um, so what do you think? Those are more conservative, should obviously just stay out of the market. But those are more aggressive. Uh, are there opportunities for more aggressive investors to, to game this? Or is it too dangerous? Oh, no, no, absolutely. There's no better time to make money than a big crash. If you just get, and look what happened in, in this first crash. It was already instructed. What did the best? The treasury bonds, the 10 to 30 year treasury bonds went up 24% while stocks went down 32 to 44 in different indices in U.S. So that's what you do. You get in the safest, high quality bonds. They like deflation. They don't have the default risk that corporate bonds do and junk bonds. And then, of course, as things go down, you buy stuff that goes down. Commodities are already down 70 some percent yeah. at worst. Yeah. And, and they're just going to end up down 80. So, so you get huge buying opportunities once in a lifetime on the other end of this. And you can actually make money through some simple inverse funds with no leverage and by being in, in the highest quality AAA corporate and, and 10 and 30 year treasury bonds, you make money in a downturn. And Harry, I'll just add on that disclaimer that only for those who are willing to take that kind of risk and are part of the income generation have already met their income needs from investments, then you could be a capitalist and take advantage of these opportunities. Well, but Harry, these treasury Harry, bonds we, are considered we, the unfortunately we, need, unfortunately, we need to leave it there for now, Harry. We're out of time. We have to go to commercial. Thanks so much for being back with us. We really appreciate it. And you stay with us too. We'll be back here with more coming up in a moment right here on the Income Generation. We'll be right back.